Kathleen Kennedy wow. thinks she's been the executive producer on. Gremlins. Poltergeist. Back to the Future. The Goonies. Fandango. American Tale. Okay. Back to the Future 2. Dad. Uh, uh, Tummy Trouble. Uh, uh, I don't know what the hell that wow. is. Gremlins 2. An American Back to the Future tale. 3. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. An American yeah. Tale. Bunny Crazy. Pit. Cape Fear. Empire oh. okay. of the Sun. Oh Schindler's God, yeah. List. She was the executive mm -hmm. producer on. Schindler's yeah. List. Wow. So she, you know, Jurassic Park, Lost World, Signs, terrible movie. Um, <laughs> Look, uh, must have been a sign. I watched it. When she I was discovered, it. Pat, it was a 24-month period. I went back and I read about her bio. In a 24-month period, she went from E.T. to Indiana Jones wow. to kick off her career as a frontline, top-line producer. She did Munich, Tom. She did The Color Purple. That was, that was later. But those 24 months when yeah. everybody in Hollywood said, who is this woman? It was E.T. and Indiana Jones in a 24-month period. Talk about box office. Talk about merchandising. Talk about good grief. Indiana Jones is a permanent ride. You know, there's all these things that happen. And the rest of her career, she proved that that was no fluke. So she's a professional in the industry. Mm -hmm. But that does she have more influence than Bob Iger? That's what I want to know. Well, I think I I think she probably does now. And that was the point that South Park made in their parody and all the voices in Hollywood. I mean, Trey Parker has been slightly conservative for a while, and he came out with that South Park evidence, the uh, the Pander Dome, right? Mm -hmm. And. And all the whispers in Hollywood goes, yeah, that's the way it really is. And that's what I was noting, not the fact that there was a parody, but all those voices were like, yeah, you know, that's kind of the way it works there. What did you think about when you saw with the South Park joining the Panderverse? Oh, well, I did have a tweet about it. A long one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like, well, this is what's going to happen next. Um, this is what I went through, basically. Um yeah, I mean, it was kind of refreshing to know that people can see exactly what my experience was. Um, and they're sitting there making fun of it, which I think, you know, humor is positive. Um, it was nice. It was nice to, I felt a little vindicated. And, Gina, and just, just going off of what you said, uh, from everything that you've, you've gone through, from the BLM stuff, come to find out, you know, George Soros back. They went. It was a scam. They stole all this money. Ridiculous, right? The trans thing. We're seeing more and more that it's like more of a mental thing. These people are, you know, they have mental issues. A lot of them are doing mass shootings now. So now that's a whole different situation. And then the Disney. You're watching. You leave. They lose a hundred billion dollars because that whole thing. Does it kind of feel good inside? Like not not necessarily vindication, but it must feel good inside your heart of hearts that you stuck to your guns and you were right this entire time. Does that feel? It feels. Um, you know, I I feel like I've been in the desert for the last couple of years, and that hasn't felt good. But it, the the part that does feel good is the um, I I am honest and I am clear, and my heart is good, and I was coming from a good place, and that was very obvious. And I think that you know so many people were watching what happened to me and they say, this is an innocent person here that you're destroying. You're, you're going above and beyond to destroy this person. Um, and I think that's why my case has had such an impact because it was so obvious. It was yeah. just so in your face. So for the last couple of years, it's been, uh, it's been a desert and it's been hard, but, um, it's okay to go through the desert because, um, then I got an email after I just realized, okay, maybe my life is going to be living in the desert now. Yeah. <laughs> and I got an email um, from an attorney that said that they were representing X and that they'd like <sighs> to um, look through my case. And I was like, what a great, what a great phone call from, from getting a, yeah, from John Favreau to now a lawyer from X going, I think we have something. <laughs> well, they didn't know what I had. Yeah. They, they said, I want to look at what you have. Um, and there's just been such, you know, my life has been riddled with such incredible moments like that. I mean, uh, uh, incredible director Steven Soderbergh picked me up from fighting and gave me an awesome, awesome opportunity. Um, you know, John Favreau, incredible human being, um, amazing mentor and, and really started finding my stride in acting. Um, ben Shapiro helped me out and just he just took the sting off of it. Right. <laughs> like I. It didn't take the cancellation away. Um, we we tried to really like puff up and say, you know, it's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to be fine. And it, it was a door open. But as far as me, I'm still very much in the desert. Um, and then here comes Elon Musk. And I'm just like, who does this happen to? Yeah. I'm just like, there's real men in the world that um, have opened doors for me that um, 
it's just made my life so for for him to do this and X to do this for me is it already has lifted this thousand pound, you know, beast off of my chest because whether I wanted it or not, I was carrying around the shame of being fired. Nobody wants to be fired. And so I was carrying around whether I was trying to like put on the brave face, I was carrying around the shame and um it was affecting my me, me physically, it's been affecting me mentally. And then um when I got that email i responded like within three hours and i'm like i don't care if i seem eager right now i said yes yes, yes. I'll, yes, yes. i would love to speak with you and then i got on the phone with them and they told them what happened told them my story they said could you you know send us some stuff i just sent them everything that i had and they ended up speaking with x and um elon and uh explaining the story and they really believe that we have an awesome oh, so by, by the way you. i mean this Good is when you. you're telling the story you know you know you know when you're asking a question do you feel vindicated yeah you know what's the thing hmm. you know okay so let's just say you get money fine that's one thing but you know what's annoying what? it's like you have such momentum you're peaking and you take you want to work like the what is the purpose of money without me creating something being part of something, it's so frustrating when you're at oh, your yeah. peak and you're not able to create, build. I'm you got stuff that's best. going on at your best. Like, I, that is so annoying. When I'm working, and it always puts my dad in tears, it's the only time I see him in tears, is when I'm working, I am at my best because I'm consistent and I, you know, diet's consistent, work is consistent, my health, my mental health. And that's also why I was speaking out about the lockdowns, too, because. You get a bus driver who's been, you know, driving a bus for 30 years and might have an addiction problem and you're going to shove him at home and stick him with like all this reality of at home. And then he's going to start drinking again. And now we've got alcoholism. Now we've got um, deaths everywhere. So as an artist, I know what it's like to not work. And it's 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 a uh, we need to work as humans, you know, um, and it's really hard to kind of create your own work, which is what I'm doing now. Um, finally. But I mean, it was uh, it was. Devastating. That's the part that's for us. I want to